Hi, my name is Billy Mossman. Today I'm going to be reading a book called Garbage Guts. The author is Emily S. Smith and the illustrator Heidi Cooper Smith. Pacific Ocean lived a monster made of trash. A hungry, greedy meanie with a handlebar moustache. And though his name is Garbage Guts, he's often called Big G. He blobs about destroying all the oceans and the seas. Big G, one day, was blobbing by and munching on a nappy when dolphins gently splashed him, which made him most unhappy. Those horrid, hateful creatures. I detest them all, he cried. I'm better than the lot of them, he said with spiteful pride. I'm faster than a bull shark. I'm slicker than a seal. I'm bigger than a whale and I'm meaner than an eel. I'm sharper than a swordfish. I'm tougher than a clam. And as for dopey dolphins, I'm much smarter. Yes, I am. then devised a dreadful plan, a bon voyage soiree. Garbage Guts Great Goodbye Gathering The party to end all parties, it read. Where? Garbage Guts home, North Pacific Ocean. When? Saturday, 31st of December. Time, 5pm till everyone is gone. At last, the party night arrived and everyone was there. The creatures all were overwhelmed by Big G's grand affair. And as the party hit full swing, that monster said with glee, Soon I'll be the only thing left living in the sea. That vile and wicked monster carried out his evil scheme. For entree I've made jellyfish, a green sea turtle's dream. For all you fish, a side of soup containing plastic pips. And to the whales, he said, try these, just packets without chips. But there was more to Big G's plan. He hadn't finished yet. He said, Let's play a dress-up game with this discarded net. And then he watched with sheer delight as chaos rained on down. Some see life sick from rubbish, while the others feared they drown. But 
then a roaring, rumbling sound made Big G feel quite grim. A monster blocking out the sun was headed right for him. This terrifying creature then began to suck and slurp. It gobbled up old garbage guts then bubbled out a burp. Deep inside its belly was a menacing machine with shredders, claws and furnaces, a horrifying scene. Poor Garbage Guts was panic struck. His body shook with fear as two big hulking metal claws began to draw quite near. It's all my fault, Big G exclaimed, ashamed and sorry too, as he was dragged and dropped between the blades that chop and chew. It took some time for Garbage Guts to open up his eyes and what he saw before him made him gasp with great surprise. No longer a trash monster, but a million different things, like kitty litter and yoga mats and seats for children's swings. His spirit bubbled up with joy and fizzy cola too. He felt relieved his wicked scheme had quickly fallen through. I've changed my ways, sang Garbage Guts. I'm now a green success. I understand I must be good and not a monstrous mess. I'll educate the humans not to let the monsters win. I'll teach them to recycle. Put your rubbish in the bin. Isn't that great? Bye. The end. So, Emily, what inspired you to write this story? That's a really great question. As well as being an author, I'm also a preschool teacher. And one year we did a project called Take Three for the Sea. As a part of that project, my preschoolers and I went out into the local environment and removed three pieces of rubbish each. So the idea is that everything that we're removing from the environment won't end up in our waterways. When we went back to our, our service, uh, we then researched rubbish in the ocean on our smart board. Uh, and what came up was the North Pacific Garbage Patch. And I'd never actually heard of the North Pacific Garbage Patch before. And I think at the time I was 34 or 35. Um, and it really disgusted me and surprised me and just made me mortified that here I was as a 35 year old woman and I'd never heard of this thing before. So it made me want to bring awareness to this issue. And what better way to do that than to write a picture book that will raise awareness for our youngest citizens, our children, so that we can start shaping those positive behaviors so that when they're older, they already have that instilled in them and they wanna take care of the environment and make sure that they're doing the best that they can to ensure survival, I guess, of both people and animals. Great, thank you. So what was your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story 
is actually when garbage guts get sucked up and taken into the belly of the beast and transformed when he realizes the error of his ways and he realizes that the way that he's been living is not actually a good way of life at all and in that moment he decides I'm going to be different I'm going to make changes I'm going to go out and spread the word about the importance of recycling because I always love it when a bad character changes is reformed and becomes good I just think that that's a wonderful part of storytelling great thank you and what was the most difficult part of the story for you to write for me I always struggle with writing the endings um, I often get ideas about the title or you know the general way that the story is going to flow or characters but writing an ending that is a wonderful round conclusion that brings everything together, that leaves the reader feeling satisfied. Um, I often really struggle with that. So creating an ending that brought the story together as a whole, that spread the word about recycling and its importance, but not seeming too teachy, like you have to do this, you have to do this. That was important for me. And um, that took a long time, a lot of working and reworking and reworking. Thank you. Thank you.